Hey guys, welcome to your first official video lecture of the year. So as you watch videos throughout the year, you need to make sure that you fill in your notes organizer. You will have one of these every time you have a video to watch. If you want to be able to use your notes on the 10 question check for understanding, you need to make sure that you have every question answered. So pause, stop, rewatch things as many times as you need to in order to make sure you get the information. So the course that you're taking is biology, and biology is the study of life and living organisms. So if we're going to take an entire course based on life and living organisms, then you need to know what does it mean to be alive. And this is not a philosophical question, so what is the meaning of life? Okay, there is an actual, actual scientific uh, explanation to, for what it means to be alive. So all living things have a certain set of characteristics. We call these the characteristics of life. So all living things are made of one or more cells. All living things display organization. All living things grow and develop. All living things are able to reproduce. All living things respond to stimuli. All living things require energy. All living things maintain homeostasis and all living things adapt to their environment. Pause if you need to to get these eight listed down for on number two on your notes organizer. So we're going to go through each characteristic and talk a little bit about each one. You're going to hear me use the term organism over and over again. The word organism means anything that has or once had all eight characteristics of living things. And you'll see um, sometimes a list will have the eight characteristics of living things. Sometimes they'll put things together and call it the six or seven characteristics of life. Some lists you'll see have ten, but the idea is all the same, what you're going to see in this video. So organisms are what we call biotic factors, things that are living and have those characteristics of life. Okay, the first characteristic on your list is all living things are made of one or more cells. A cell is the basic unit or building block of life. Some organisms are made up of only a single cell, and we call those organisms unicellular, like, for example, this little protist here called a euglena. A bacteria um, cell is a single-celled organism. Other organisms, like us, for example, plants, for example, are multicellular, and they're made up of many cells. All cells contain genetic information. Typically, that is DNA, uh, but not always, but all cells do carry genetic information. Okay, the next characteristic of life is that all th living things display organization. Every structure in an organism has a specific function. That is, even in a single-celled bacteria, the structures found within the single cell all have a function. Okay. Every organ in our body has a function. So all living things display some type of organization. And they all follow this general rule right here. So at the very smallest level, we have atoms. Atoms come together to form molecules. So you're filling this in on the pyramid and number six on your notes organizer from the bottom to the top. So we have atoms joined together to form molecules. Molecules come together to form those little parts inside of cells called organelles. Organelles come together to form an entire cell. Similar cells come together to form tissues. Similar tissues come together to form organs. Then organs of certain functions come together to form an entire organ system. And then all the organ systems together make up the living organism. Okay, so even a plant, um, for example, a root is considered an organ within the plant organism. Okay, next characteristic of life, all living things grow and develop. Grow simply means getting bigger, an increase in mass. Development refers to a change in abilities over the lifetime of the organism. So obviously a frog is a great example of both of these things. Um, the tadpole is much smaller than the adult bullfrog, so you see a growth there, an increase in mass. But you also see this change in abilities as the organism goes through its lifespan. Okay, so think about humans. Obviously, baby humans are much smaller than grown humans, so we have growth. And we have development. We have abilities that change as our life goes on. Okay, your next characteristic of life is that all living things are capable of reproduction. So the... Organisms produce offspring in order to be able to pass genetic traits from one generation to the next for the survival of the species, right? That is the whole point of being able to reproduce. Now, organisms are capable of reproduction in different ways. There's asexual reproduction and there's sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is when you have one parent producing offspring, so the offspring are genetically identical to the parent. So an example of this would be a bacteria cell that simply divides. You have the one parent cell, it divides. Now you have two cells that are genetically identical to that original parent cell. 
Okay, then you have sexual reproduction. So animals are capable of sexual reproduction where you have two parents um, that, you know, there's a, a combining of traits in order to produce offspring that are genetically different from the parent. So pause here if you need to to fill out the Venn diagram under 8C. Okay, the next characteristic is that all living things respond to stimuli. So living things will make changes in response to their environment. Um, the thing that causes the change of the reaction in an organism is called the stimulus. The response are the reactions to those internal and external stimuli. So in our little picture here, we have this plant growing towards some light source. Okay, so the light source would be the stimulus, the response would be the plant's growth towards that light source. Take a second, pause to see if you can identify the stimulus and the response in this scenario under 9D. The next characteristic of life is that all living things require energy. Energy is needed for all life processes, but organisms are capable of getting energy in different ways. Um, organisms that are what's called autotrophic are capable of using energy from the sun in order to create their own food. Uh, and a great example of that are plants which utilize the process of photosynthesis. Okay, they make their food automatically by using energy from the sun. Heterotrophs have to eat other organisms in order to obtain their energy. So they have to eat plants or they have to eat animals, but they have to eat organisms in order to obtain energy. Decomposers are capable of breaking down dead and decaying organisms using enzymes in order to absorb those nutrients and get their energy that way. So all living things need energy for life processes, but autotrophs, heterotrophs, and decomposers get that energy in various ways. Okay, all living things are able to maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis sounds like a super fancy word, but it's really just the Main, the maintaining a stable internal environment. So a regulation of an organism's internal conditions in order to maintain life. So the removal of waste, right? Getting waste out of a cell or out of a body, that is maintaining homeostasis. Osmosis is the movement of water in and out of cells. That's maintaining homeostasis, maintaining a stable internal environment. The one we're all used to is called thermoregulation or controlling the internal temperature of an organism. So humans maintain homeostasis, maintain their internal temperature by when we get too hot, our body starts to sweat, right? Because that evapor evaporative cooling um, cools it off. If we get too cold, our body immediately starts to shiver. That movement of muscles generates heat. That's part of your body's way of maintaining homeostasis. Okay, next characteristic of life. All living things are able to adapt to their environment. An adaptation is any inherited characteristic that benefits an organism in its environment. So adaptations help organisms survive. They're traits that helps organisms survive in their environment. Um, so for example here, our cheetah, right? He's got lots of adaptations that help him survive in his particular environment. Now if I took that cheetah and I put him in the snowy tundra, would those be adaptations that helped him survive? Probably not, okay? So they are specific to the environment in which the organism lives. A strong species is one that is genetically varied. There's a lot of genetic differences amongst the traits in a population. And the easiest way to think of why that is, is think of a crop of corn, for example. If a crop of corn is all genetically identical, then they are all susceptible to the same things, right? If they're susceptible to a certain insect, if that insect were to appear, the entire crop would die. Now, if the crop of corn was genetically varied and there were a lot of genetic differences amongst the, the crop that you planted, then maybe some would be susceptible to the insect, but others would be resistant. So if that insect appeared, hopefully some of the species would survive. Okay, so in summary, here are our characteristics of all living things. Your video today is gonna be short and sweet. All living things are made of one or more cells. All living things display organization. All living things grow and develop. All living things are able to reproduce. All living things respond to stimuli. All living things require energy. All living things maintain homeostasis and all living things adapt to their environment. So your last problem, number 13, you have a list here of some biotic and abiotic factors. See if you can put those into the correct category. So biotic factors are your living factors, abiotic factors are your non-living factors. Okay, so at this point you are done with your first video lecture. Make sure your notes organizer is complete. Every question answered so that you can, you can use these notes on your homework check for understanding. Have a great night.